Hey, my name is David Buck, and in this video, we're gonna learn how to make a photo pop in Lightroom. What does it mean to make a photo pop? Well, it's just another way of describing how to make your subject stand out from the background in the photo that you're working on. So we're gonna walk through this super important step together and help you understand how you can make your photos stand out from all the rest. This is the fourth step in the editing process. If you wanna understand the entire process, click on this video here, which will go through step-by-step step what we do from start to finish. So right now we're gonna look at several different photo examples and how we can use brighter and darker, in focus and out of focus, and color contrast, which is having different complementary colors to help bring attention to our subject. All right, we've balanced this photo, now it's time to make it pop. First things first, go down to the transform tool. We've got some buildings in our photo, so press the auto button and it'll straighten everything up so that our buildings are nice and up and down. Everybody loves up and down buildings. With this one, we're gonna use the color contrast method. So we've got a lot of color in this image and it just so happens that the city is a predominantly yellow color and the sky is a predominantly blue color, which if you remember your color wheels, here we'll pull up our color grading so that we have a nice wheel in front of us, that we have a yellow over here and we've got blue over here. So opposite complementary colors. When I'm looking at an image like this, I wanna see how far it can go before it looks absolutely terrible. So I'm gonna bump up my saturation and my vibrance all the way. And though that looks absolutely horrendous, boy, my focus really does go onto the city. So if I could pull that back to a point that looks natural, then I think we're gonna have something really pleasing here. So let's focus on the colors and see what we can do with them. So let's bring that back down to where we are. I'm gonna bring the saturation up quite a bit. You can do those independently as well. So see what the saturation does. Okay, that's, start, that's looking pretty good in this image. Whereas the vibrance really pulls out too much into the, uh, or adds too much color into the sky and makes it look almost cartoonish. So let's, let's, uh, let's go a little heavier on the saturation than the vibrance. And remember that we can pull down any individual colors in our HSL or color panels. I want overall, does the city look like I want it to? This isn't light and darken. This is just the colors, see what we can do with them to create some, some, some pop and some pizzazz to our image. So I think it's, it's too much right about there. So I'm gonna pull that back a little bit to let's call it 35 which I'm pretty happy with. And this particular color right here, I'm gonna to have to deal with. So let's go down to our HSL tab and find out where that is. So if I click on luminance and I, I uh, click on my reds up and down, you, it'll, uh, it'll scream at you, oh, hey, we're over here. The question is, do I wanna just pull down the saturation of that a little bit? What does that do to the rest of the image? Yeah, I like that. Let's. Uh, Let's do that. I could also spot it out too. I could take the healing brush tool and get rid of this altogether. But anytime you do any kind of this healing, you'll notice here in the shadowing or in the reflection of the water, we're getting that same wind sail. So that's not gonna work in this case. Still gotta deal with that. So the other option is to take our brush tool and just do a selective desaturation on that item right there. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, the other color that I'm really not liking is this turquoise over here. It's really drawing my attention away. And one of the ways that you can look at an image and say, well, what is actually distracting me is go up here to the photo tab and down here at flip vertical. When you flip an image upside down, you disassociate reality with it. And so you can start to see what's actually drawing your attention. I'm really drawn to this, this peak right here. This is a distraction right here. This is a distraction. My eye is definitely going to some of these. It, it, this, this teal color is pulling me away from the city, which I don't want. So we can flip back normal. And it just so happens that we have a lovely aqua slider right here. So let's pull down the aqua slider and just see what it's doing. I'm losing a little bit of my, my uh, reflection, but that's okay. I'll take that. I want to even darken down those aquas there. Okay, so now I'm really not looking here nearly as much. I'm going to pull my, uh, my, my healing brush tool out again and just kind of get rid of this guy, see what happens. Pretty happy with that. And this guy right here. In Photoshop itself, you can do a much better job, a much cleaner job of, uh, of removing those kinds of details, but we're going to stick with Lightroom for now. In our before and after here, just, just dealing with colors, only with the, the color saturations, we've got our before which was that one there, and our, and our after there, which is great. I'm very happy with that. I, would, I, uh, I may add a little bit of blacks into the city there. 
uh, watching specifically the shadowing in this building here. I could pull up my contrast a little bit and really I just I don't want to take it too far. The color's doing a really nice job so there should be some shadowing. Because uh, we can, because there's multiple different ways to create separation to create some pop to your image, we're going to say, okay, this is what would have happened just with color. But let, now let's take a look. What happens if we add a little bit of light and dark? Our, so our subject is clearly the city and everything else is just adding to it. So let's mask here of the background. And let's see what happens if we just darken that down a little bit. You don't want to push it too far here because because you don't want to make it look unrealistic. But we could potentially bump up our saturation a little bit and see what happens. Oh no, too far. Also notice when you go too far here in the masking, specifically at the trees and the edges, you can see way too much. So let's pull that back quite a bit. And But with a few more clicks, adding our light and dark separation with our color separation adds another layer of dynamic interest to the image. There's our before. There's our after. Very happy with that. All right, we've color corrected our images. We've pulled back our shadows and our highlights and brought down our contrast and it's the general color tone that we want. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this with this type of picture. Number one, uh, remember that there are three different ways. You can use bright and dark, you can use color separation, and you can use focus blur or you know what's called depth of field, which this image already has a lot of. If we if we zoom in, um, you'll see you know how, how in focus our couple is, whereas the background is out of focus. So there's already lots of separation within the couple, but of course we can make it a whole lot better with editing, because frankly this photo is very flat at the moment. So let's give it a little bit more flat, but or a little bit less flat. Uh, keeping in mind though, if I just bump up the contrast, it will do some stuff, but what you want to avoid specifically when you're talking about editing images of a couple is skin isn't supposed to look quite so, well, bad. So contrast in the skin, not so great. So we're gonna work on this a couple of different ways. Number one, the easy way to deal with this is say, okay, well, I'm gonna make it brighter. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use the separation of light and dark to make my, my background a whole lot brighter and my, my, my couple actually darker than, than what the background is because that's what the light was at the time. Um, and I can certainly do that and that starts to help things right away. I can warm, I can warm it up to give it a little bit more I, ca I call it a little bit more love, but frankly, we just like pictures of people to be a little bit warmer. And I can bump up my, my vibrance, clarity, and texture, and a little bit of dehaze here. Um, we can do a pretty nice job of making this a nice photo, but it's not... Uh, I'm, I'm just going to add a little bit of brush here to bring down the contrast of the couple and bring up their exposure just a little bit. So, you know, we certainly can make a nice image that way, which is more than acceptable. So I'd really like to do this a little bit of a different way, and I want to get the mountains really playing a big part of this. We're going to turn this into the couple being brighter and the background being darker. So we're going to warm up the whole image. It's the blues. You see the blues back here on the mountain. We want to get rid of those. I want to add a little bit of warmth to the image, and then what I'm going to do is get a background layer Okay. I'm going to remove a linear, linear gradient off of the bottom here so that I'm focusing on the mountain in the background. Okay, So I'm going to bring that down quite a bit. And you can already see that our bride and groom are starting to, to pop a little bit more off the background. But specifically, you notice there's some haloing here and I can see the adjustments being made. So my linear gradient was a bit too high and so I was losing some of my detail off of that mountain. So we're going to adjust that a little bit. And if it, if it gets apparent, we can come in here afterwards. Actually, we could do it right now and say I want to brush a little bit less in here so that we're not getting that mask. Okay, so now there's our mask. And we're going to warm this up. Warm up meaning make it a little bit more orange. Check our, check our tint just a little bit. And I'm going to... He haze that. When you're working in a mask like this, the histogram is actually showing you what the mask is. And so if I want to push it higher or lower, I can add to my highlights and to my whites. I want to be just below the top on the whites, which is this spot right right in here. And so I'm I'm pretty happy there. I'm gonna add a new gradient down here, which is going to be a linear to the bottom. You could do a linear or a brush here. Either one is fine. The tree line in the back is masking some of our adjustment layer or our, 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 um, 
our edges. Some contrast in there, bring up my whites, bring down my shadows, highlights up, and give it a bit more saturation, a little bit more excitement down in there. Mask of just my couple. So I'm going to select my subject, and this is where I'm going to bring down the contrast a little bit. I'm going to bring up the shadows, and right now it looks like they're cut out a little bit. It's a little bit overdone. So what you can do to make it blend into the background is bring down your blacks a little bit. And of course, when you take them too far, you can see what you you can see where. But you just dial it down to taste so that it looks like they're part of the scene. Uh, we can bring our contrast up to taste. The one thing that I'm noticing is that that bright spot here that we had is just a little bit overpowering. So we're gonna we're gonna do a, a radial gradient right here, and and bring down our highlights just a touch, our whites just a touch. We can bring the overall image up because we've got a little bit more to play with. And then in order to bring it all together, we can go to our color grading and just add just a hint of tone into our shadows. So you could either add a hint of, of orange, which would give it that kind of a look, or you can go a little bit of blue. But what it does by adding some, some color into the shadows is you're, is you're tying the image together into a, into a certain tone. Of course, if I go way too far, it looks terrible. Um, actually that isn't that looks okay right there too you can go whatever tone you want here whatever your style of look is if we go blue and then bring it right down and then just for fun we're gonna warm up that image just a little bit right in their faces I'm seeing a little bit too much contrast so let's add another radial gradient right here and we're going to bring down the contrast bring up the shadows the exposure just a hair and there you go we've so before, after. So I got three more images here real quickly, and I wanna look at them from a before and after standpoint and just talk about them because one of the biggest challenges to photo editing is to know what to do to an image to begin with, what to start to play with, what to change. So this picture of the Eiffel Tower, once we balance the image, it looks really good as it is, and to saturate it is just gonna make it look kind of funny. So. Here under the presence section of the of the basic panel, the texture and the clarity and the haze, just by adjusting those a little bit, by bringing up the whites and the bringing down the blacks, creating some more localized contrast, we really make the tower pop off of the skyline in the background. So I would say this is this is right borderline. It might even be just a, a bit too far. But to show you that just a, a, some small changes in localized contrast in whites and blacks, texture and clarity, we can bring out our subjects a whole lot more. This next one, a wedding image, which looks pretty good as it is, but there's a few things that are distracting from the bride. So it's not major changes, but you see those leaves, they're very bright and our eye is always drawn to the brightest part of the image. So because the dress and the, and the leaf of the, uh, of the bushes are competing for the brightest spot of the image, we need to darken those those two little leaves that are pulling our attention away from the bride. There's also some brightness in the background, see in the houses back behind those trees that is uh, is pulling our attention away from the bride. So even just darkening those things down by brightening up our, our bride and a few small color corrections really brings out our subject. So uh, it's not always big changes. Sometimes it's just a few little changes that really draws our attention into our subject. The third one from the same wedding they're back in the trees there, and the, the shadowing on her face just kind of makes me not want to look at her face nearly as much as I should, and the white of the dress is pulling my attention away from her face. So we automatically, as humans, want to be drawn to the eyes, specifically in a photo. So if you have two eyes in a photo, you want to look there. So this is just helping to guide our viewer into where we want them to look, and darkening down around the bride a little bit changing the color slightly and really bumping up the shadows in the face area and uh, drawing our and, and making it so that when we do look at her eyes we're not being pulled away by much more we're just kind of glancing around the image and our main focus is on our bride so sometimes just taking a look at what we can do to a photo and then working on 
what changes we need to make within the program to 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 make our photos stand out as much as they can so not always big changes sometimes small changes start looking at your photos from what they can be and then as you use these techniques to help your subject stand out and make your photos pop